the to the cow to some some members of the Vanua uh, Lamini, the Permanent Secretary of Waterways and Environment, uh, Mr. Joshua Wycliffe, Deputy Secretary of uh, Ministry of Agriculture, Mr. Johnny Savalawa, Directors, uh, Director of uh, Ministry of Waterways, Directors of Ministry of Waterways and Environment, Mahendra Kumar and uh, Ms. Uh, Sandeep Singh, Principal Agriculture Officer, Northern, uh, Mr. Asala, um, senior staff from Ministry of Waterways and Environment and uh, Agriculture. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Bulabanaka to you all. I also want to acknowledge the presence of uh, staff from Commissioner's Office, uh, PA and uh, DO Tavuni, uh, Rokutui Tavuni, uh, Vinaka. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased pleased to be here uh, in your midst to commission uh, this project that means a lot to the members of the community here in the village of Lamin. The project of uh, the Lamini Seawall project. This project adds to a list of coastal rehabilitation and protection works that we are undertaking for this financial year a total of 25 that we are targeting for this year. Ladies and gentlemen, in recent decades, beach erosion in most of Fiji is significantly threatening the existing of coastal communities like here in Lamini. And as you know, in 2018, when our Honorable Minister for Economy announced the budget, the theme of the budget was protecting communities. Communities like this, villages, settlements, both in rural interior maritime division as well as in urban area. The entire budget was dedicated towards ensuring how we could protect communities. Our coastline is too important to the nation and lifestyles of Fijians as we cannot leave it to erode and invade our homes and our livelihoods and our sense of security. The rising sea level and the threat that it is making to our communities along the coastline, we just cannot continue to see that these communities are vulnerable and helpless. We as government will have to respond not only to mitigate the effects of climate change and the rising sea level, but also to build resilience amongst this community Resilience meaning ability to bounce back from these sh shocks in a very short period of time. Ladies and gentlemen, to ensure the well-being of the Lamini community, our Ministry of Waterways and Environment, through its contractor, Viti Vanua. Viti Vanua, Naga, will retrofit the deteriorating seawall by constructing a stone masonry seawall in front of the existing seawall which was done in 1995, which is, which is quite badly deteriorated due to the constant bombardment of uh, waves and, and the effect of rising sea level on it. Furthermore, the, um, this project, the Coastal Protection Works, is 163 meters long uh, stone machinery that will be uh, constructed and 2.5 meters uh, higher uh, than the previous one because the, pre the previous one, the height, is no longer sufficient to protect uh, given the sea, le sea level has risen. So that height will be further extended by 2.5 meters and this is one of the largest sea wall projects that we are doing, if I'm right, probably the largest one. Uh, you know, most of the seawall projects that we're doing is around 600,000, it's about 400 meters, 600 meters, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, I mean, uh, 400,000, 500,000, 600,000. This is the, in this financial year, I think this is the, probably the largest, most expensive one that we are doing. So, what I'm trying to say is that when it comes to protecting communities, 
our government, led by Honorable Prime Minister Honorable Bani Marama, when really not looking at the monetary implication, the money thing, what is of our primary interest is to ensure that we protect the community, protect the villages, protect the ancestral lands. Relocation is a solution, but it's not a solution that we willy-nilly decide. We just willy-nilly don't decide that, you know, the sea level rise is where we relocate a village or community. That's, that's, a, that's a solution that's the last on our list. If we really cannot protect the com community through construction, construction of sea walls, etc., it is <coughs> totally not possible, then only we, the government will, at our expense, will then relocate communities. For this place here, Lamini, we think that we still can protect this uh, community here so that you can continue to live in your ancestral land where your emotions are you know, very strongly attached. The, uh, in this particular uh, project of coastal protection, it includes mobilization and demobilization of equipment by the uh, contractor. Uh, earthworks for site preparation, construction of reinforced uh, concrete seawall, construction of stone imaginary wall. It will benefit this community here um, from coastal flooding and storm surge. It will address the longshore drift and associated erosion of uh, um, your foreshore area. It will uh, restore your beach. It will also uh, provide, of course, a peace of mind that you know you are protected, you will not be losing this particular place. Ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned to you, as I alluded to earlier on, we are being challenged by natural causes, changes in the nature, climate change. <coughs> Apart from coastal erosion, we also have inland waterways that are being eroded off. And we are looking at developing nature-based solution to dealing to deal with a problem arising out of nature. And that nature-based solution to deal with nature-based nature, nature -based problems is something that we see as a sustainable solution to climate change. In regards to coastal protection, we are looking at uh, uh, starting projects of mangrove planting throughout the coast of Vitilevu, Vanuilevu and other maritime uh, islands that comprises of Fiji. It is something that is not, uh, will not be able to complete in one year or two years. It's a long-term project and will require the collaboration of NGOs and private sector to come and partner with us so that we can uh, take uh, you know, a partnership approach and speed up uh, protection of coastal communities by planting mangroves. With regard to uh, erosion of riverbanks, inland waterways, you may have recalled that last uh, week, a week before last, we commissioned a project in uh, Kalebu, a nature-based solution to the issue of coastal uh, riverbank erosion, Vetiva Grass project. The unique part of this particular project is that we are providing a nature-based solution to a problem caused by nature. Number two, second uniqueness about the project is the project is a community-based project. We pay the community to clear the area, source the vetiva grass, plant the vetiva grass, and look after it. We give the ownership to the community. So while we are protecting the community, we are also paying the community and we're making the community owners of that project. For a meter, we're paying $12.20 a meter. For the 400 meters of vetiva grass that was planted in, um, in, in Thailevu, along the river, we paid close to $5,000, $4,800 or so. So we're looking at expanding and extending the project throughout Fiji, where we see our rivers are being threatened and eroded off by um, increased water flow uh, in those rivers. Uh, particularly larger rivers where we are losing a massive amount of um, arable land like Navua, Singatoka, Ba, Rekireki, Nakamandra River.
these are our priorities now going forward this year and half of next year we want to see major projects in these areas but that's not the only place that's only about 15 percent of the places that we need to get to but while we are protecting uh, while we are developing responses to deal with uh, problems caused by nature we also need to get ready to look inward and see how we are contributing to uh, uh, threat and threatening our environment and the natural resources and ecosystem our own conduct our behavior in terms of the way we do farming in terms of how and where we dispose of our rubbish our waste our litter this has become a major challenge to us now our household sector our agriculture sector our commercial sector our industrial sector who are disposing the waste in our waterways in open spaces in parks around and in mangroves and this is not acceptable and won't be tolerated by us we want to protect our natural resource we want to protect our environment and we the custodian of uh, environment in this fiji in this country fiji we will ensure that future generations are not deprived of deriving the same amount of benefit as we do from our natural environment and natural resources and we will at the moment we are trying to educate we are trying to provide alternatives of where they will dispose of litter and waste and remains from the production process but if they continue to do that and breach our legislations then we will come hard and prosecute those who are doing that we also are urging members of household and you know, members of the commercial industrial sector to fine tune their production process so that they can minimize the waste that they generate and secondly to assist us by separating waste and recycling those waste a 2012 study by adb for super city revealed that on a particular on an average day super city alone produces about 65 to 68 tons of waste of which about 80 percent is organic waste which can be recycled now imagine that 65 tons every day goes to the landfill but 80 80 percent of it we can put it in a corner in a backyard or somewhere and let it regenerate or you know turn into compost how much we can save cost in terms of transporting to the landfill and if you don't do that we cannot continue to construct more landfills and dump sites there's a limit to it there's a carrying capacity and i do hope that people understand this and everywhere i go everywhere we go we will remind and continue to remind the public that the contributors to waste and littering in this country are none other than ourselves the problem of waste is created by us and we have to solve it we have to solve it but first, I want the current generation, the adults, leaders of the community, the Talatalas, the Molvis and the Pandits, and all community leaders, advisory councillors, all of them, to talk about these things in their meetings, in their church service, in the temples, in the mosque. Because it is everyone's responsibility to protect our environment, not just Department of Environment, or Waterways, or Agriculture because we all must take ownership because because environmental pollution is a public negative externality that will affect everyone whether you are causing it or not and that is why this matter is discussed at global level because one individual country cannot control it so ladies and gentlemen today we are here to um, you know commission this project and uh, it's, it's a very uh, bright and happy day for the community here. And uh, on behalf of Honorable Prime Minister, I want to thank you for your patience. And I want to assure you a message from Honorable Prime Minister that we are here for everyone, whether you are closer to Suva or Nendi or in, in Kandavu or Didia or Tavini. You all are equal to us. You all are in our mind, even though you are out of sight. When we make policies, you feature in our mind. Yeah? 
Thank you, Naka, and we look forward to commissioning the project. Thank you.